Hello everybody, welcome to another home safari. My name is Dustin and I'm a reptile zookeeper here at the Cincinnati Zoo. And it is National Frog Month, so we're here in the historic reptile building, one of my favorite buildings in the zoo. About 150 years old, and we're specifically in front of the Amazonian exhibit here. This is where our dark frogs live, and that's where we're gonna focus on uh, our home safari today. But we do have some other animals in here too. So this whole exhibit is set up like the Amazon rainforest. These guys are from Central and South America. And um, we also have some snakes in here too, like you can see. There's um, Julia Squeezers on the left there. She is a very popular snake here. She's a red-tailed boa moving around, checking out the environment. We also have emerald uh, tree boas up top. There's our large female. Uh, very, we actually have a pair of those, and hopefully at some point we'll get some baby tree boas too. Um, but really we're here for the dark frogs. These guys are really cool, and the first thing you'll notice is that they're active right now. So most frogs are active at night, where it's you know easier, easier to stay hidden, but these guys are out and about during the day. They're going to be looking for food, calling to each other, and that's because they are poison dark frogs. You, um, they really don't have anything to worry about, and actually they're advertising that they're dangerous by their bright colors. Typically, the brighter the dark frog, the more dangerous that they are. So we have two species of dark frog in here. That the yellow ones there are called dying dark frogs, D-Y-E-I-N-G, dark frogs. And they're one of the largest dark frogs in the wild. They can get up to two inches or so, really big. Um, we have about, we have 14 in this exhibit, and then we have the green and black dark frogs, I mean, we can see those too, and those are really cool, they're a little bit smaller, they're called green and black dark frogs, so very easy to remember, um, and they get a lot smaller, about an inch or so too, but yeah, so there's a lot of variation in dark frogs, there are actually about 200 different species of dark frog in the wild, and um, most of them are actually pretty small. They're gonna be about half an inch or smaller. Um, and most of them are actually not gonna be very toxic at all. Um, there's some that just taste really bitter that um, really you don't wanna taste because they're pretty gross. Others like these in the wild would be um, mildly dangerous. They cause aches and pains and you wouldn't feel really well uh, for quite a while. And then there's something called the golden poison dart frogs and they're in the Phyllobates genus and they're the ones that are used on those blow dart arrows. Very dangerous. Um, but they actually, uh, and they can kill up to 12 people. One frog can kill up to 12 people or so, so very toxic. Um, but that's the, the minority for sure. Most of them are um, somewhere in the middle to not dangerous at all, but they're showing off. They actually get their toxins from what they eat in the wild. So in the wild, they're going to eat insects. They're going to eat ants and flies that have a lot of alkaloids. And those basically are the building blocks to how they make their own poison. So then that poison comes out of their skin. It's all over their body when they're stressed. So, but here at the zoo, we don't feed them what we feed to them in the wild. Uh, we actually feed them fruit flies and small crickets, and we'll feed them here in a moment. Um, there's Jenna. <laughs> Jenna's going to throw in some food for them. Uh, so yeah, fruit flies uh, today that actually are bred without their wings. And uh, we also have um, some baby crickets called pinhead crickets. So obviously dark frogs have very small mouths, so they need very small food. And you can see them chowing down there. Um, they have, um, they actually lap up the prey using their tongue. It's very, very sticky and shoots out really fast. And then you can see maybe if you look really closely, maybe a glimpse of the tongue, but they are uh, extraordinarily fast at grabbing that food. So pretty cool. One of my favorite things, um, yeah, but so these guys aren't toxic, I should say, too. So they, they don't eat what they eat in the wild, so we could actually handle them all that we want. Um, but you really wouldn't want to touch a dark frog with your hands, your bare hands, because um, all that oils and whatever's on your hands can pass through the skin of a dark frog. They, their skin is what's called very permeable. And so um, things like toxin, toxins can also enter their body. And so that's why frogs are called bioindicators, which means if there is poison in the environment, things like pollution, they're some of the first animals that are going to be affected by those toxins. And so it's very important that we keep them around because they are uh, kind of the canary in the coal mine for you know, possible issues in the wild, too. One of my favorite things about dart frogs is their life cycle. They have a really interesting life cycle. So the males will actually defend an area where they will call to the females. 
And so if any of the other males get too close, the males will kick the, the other males or they'll um, body slam them, wrestle them. It's pretty hilarious to watch, uh, but they're, they're, they mean business. They want to defend that area. Um, and then they call. So every dart frog has a different call, every species. Some of them sound like buzzing, others um, sound like chirping like a bird, but some of them are, even the smallest dart frogs, um, their calls can really carry a long distance too. So once that female hears the call that she likes, she'll hop over to the male, and that's when he will lead her to a place for her to lay her eggs. Usually that's under the leaf litter or maybe underneath a plant. They've even been known to lay their eggs in trash, uh, such as uh, cans and jars that are discarded. So they're not too picky as long as it's a safe place. And so those eggs are actually gonna look like little black dots, and there's gonna be about five to 10 eggs. Um, the male is then going to take care of these eggs. So the female's done. It's a, a weird animal where the males do most of the care for the offspring. So the male is going to kick away and, and defend those eggs, and he's also going to keep them moist, too. The way he does that is by peeing on the eggs. It's really crazy, <laughs> but it works for them. And uh, sometimes he'll um, visit them several times in a day, and sometimes one male dart frog will have multiple clutches that he will uh, defend and, and keep uh, moist, basically, too. So after a few days, those eggs start to look like a tadpole. They have a, a head and a tail. And then you'll start to see external gills, these um, red like veins that come out of their head. And that, that's how they pick up oxygen from the water. So then they keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, after about uh, two weeks or so, you'll start to see a tadpole and it'll burst out of the egg. And then we'll actually be swimming around. It's then when the males come back and they will hitch a ride on the back of the male dart frogs. So they suction to the back individually and he takes them to their own little pool to grow up. And that could be in a bromeliad, which is a plant that holds water, or just a pool in the environment just that sticks around for a while. And the important thing is that he keeps them separate because uh, tadpoles are um, cannibalistic. They will eat each other, and they'll actually eat anything they want to because they're just trying to grow so quickly. Most of the time, though, tadpoles are gonna eat um, broken down leaf matter, they're gonna eat algae, um, and maybe if some flies or things like that fall into the water, they're going to eat those too. So after a couple months, they're going to start popping out legs. Those legs, the back legs are going to come in first, and then the front legs, and you're going to start to look like, they're going to start looking like um, their parents. They're going to start getting colorations and markings too. And then that's when they're going to hang outside of the water and just kind of breathe air. Now they no longer need those gills, they now have lungs. So frogs go through a metamorphosis, so it's a complete body change. It's really incredible. So then um, the tadpole is then uh, now a little froglet and will hop away and will actually live off of the remaining tail for uh, two, two weeks or so. So it will, it will not need to eat for a little while. And um, so it gives it a little bit of time, a little head start, and they'll usually just hang out in the leaf litter, stay hidden. And then after about a year and a half or so, they're old enough to have their own family, and there you go, the whole cycle over again. Um, something cool, though, too, is they're called poison dart frogs, of course, so I have to touch on the fact that they were used a long time ago um, in South America um, by the tribes there to um, put on the tip of their poison darts, their blow, uh, blow guns. And the way they did this was to collect the, the frogs. They would use, again, only the most dangerous of frogs, the really, um, the golden dart frogs. And they would collect them with leaves and put them in a basket. And then they would rub the tip of the arrow, the, the dart, um, on, the, on their backs and kind of get them a little bit agitated. And then they would release that poison. And then they would release the frogs. The frog would, would be able to recover. And that um, dart, uh, dart is extremely dangerous. And they would use that to hunt things like um, monkeys, or birds and, and mammals too. So it was used for a very long time by those tribes. So pretty cool to watch them eat. Ready for some questions? Sure. Ellen wants to know what part of the frog is poisonous? Their, all their skin is, is toxic. So even on their arms and legs, um, it comes out of their, their skin. So all over, it's pretty cool. Ellery asked, are there some poison dart frogs that are more lethal than others? Yeah, like I said before, there's some that only taste nasty but won't kill you, and there's some that could kill up to 12 
people, 12 adults, so a whole different gamut. And there's even some dart frogs that are really clever and will mimic the coloration. So over time they learn that if you look like this a certain way, the predators will leave you alone, even if you aren't toxic at all. So they're mimicking other dart frogs, which is really cool. Um, and Kylan has a question, do dart frogs live up in trees? They do. Um, they're actually, their genus is Dendrobates, and it means tree climber. Um, but most of the smaller dart frogs are going to spend most of their time up in the trees. These are much larger, and you know there's a higher risk of causing injury if they were to fall. So you're going to see these, these species that we have here, these two, um, spend a lot more time in the leaf litter and hang out there. But especially when they're calling, the males, when they call to the females, they'll climb up higher because that'll help that um, call go a little bit further. Sarah wanted to know what their lifespan is. Great question. So dart frogs can actually live a pretty long time. They're, um, they can live over 10 years, and there are reports of some living up to 20 years or so. So pretty long lived for such a little animal. Chloe wants to know how many different colors can they be? Oh, there's so many different colors. They're called a polymorphic species. So there's all these different kinds of colors, even from the same species. So if you look at the dart frogs here, you'll see some of them are green and black, and then ones that look very similar are blue and black. Those are the same species, but they can vary depending on where they're from in the wild. And things like rivers can cut off populations, or if there's deforestation happening in the wild, um, they can change colors um, even within the same species. So tons of different colors. Usually they're, they're bright colors like the yellows and the reds and the oranges and greens. Um, there's only a couple dart frogs that are kind of brown or uh, gray. They're really vibrant animals, really beautiful. Evelyn has two good questions. She asked, what are their predators and mm -hmm. if they're endangered? Great questions, yeah. Um, so they only have one natural predator. It's ca called a fire-bellied snake. It's a small snake that's from uh, South America that is specifically evolved to eat poison dart frogs. So they are immune to the toxins. It's really crazy. Everything else, um, you know, wouldn't be able to eat them. People ask about the snakes in here too, if they would bother the, the frogs, and they don't at all. It's not worthwhile, um, and they, um, in the wild, um, you, know, you could die potentially. So um, only that one species that I'm aware of that eats them. And as far as the conservation, so these species are pretty common in the wild, but there are certainly some uh, dart frogs that are endangered. And that's mostly due to habitat loss. You, you always hear about the dart frog, or, I'm sorry, the rainforest shrinking over time. And that's still happening. Um, a lot of these old growth forests are still being cut down for agriculture or to harvest the trees. And that affects so many different animals because you think about how you know, high the diversity is in the rainforest. It's really incredible. So, um, and so they are, there are some endangered frogs um, that need our help. There's also a fungus that kills fro frogs called the chytrid fungus. And that's been around for a while and it basically dries out the frogs and doesn't allow them to breathe. And, and so um, that's something that they're facing in the wild that's affecting frog populations all over the world. Olivia wants to know if the snakes in there are venomous and why they don't eat frogs. Yeah, they are non-venomous. We have red-tailed boa in there, again, Julia Squeezer. She is a pretty big snake that they, they in the wild, eat primarily mammals. They actually have heat-sensing pits that help them sense temperature differences so they can find out where the mammals are. They stand out in the wild. Um, and they can shrink, too, so it would be a pretty ridiculous thing about um, eating a dart frog when you can eat a much larger thing that's um, much more worth it. Um, emerald tree boas, the snakes up top, those guys, um, eat primarily birds and bats, um, and they have some of the longest teeth of any snake, um, so make sure that they do not escape once they grab onto them. So they kind of specialize more so on birds. Um, so yeah, we've never had one um, get eaten. I would be very surprised. How many eggs do they have at a time? They can have uh, about five to 10 eggs, depending on. So the bigger ones have a little bit more eggs on average than the smaller ones too. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's home safari. Um, if you enjoy these videos um, and you're able to, uh, please consider donating to the zoo. It goes a long ways to helping out uh, us take care of these animals the best that we can. There's also an activity that you can find on the Facebook page there. And as always, check us out uh, every day at 3 o'clock. Have a great day.